7th and 8th grade social studies students. This is Mr. Pettigo. We're trying something new in class. Um, you've been assigned to watch this quick video. We're going to dis discuss it in class and do a quick exercise on Wednesday based upon this video, okay? So what, are, what we're talking about in history, we're talking about what America looks like after 1830, okay? Now, 1830 is the year um, when the Indian Removal Act is signed, okay? So Jackson signs this. You know, we talked about the Trail of Tears and all the, you know, terrible things that these Native Americans had to go through um, and being relocated, okay? That really opens up the Northwest, right? Because, you know, previously there was a threat of Indian attack. Their settlers were kind of isolated and stuck on river, you know, um, river valleys. They weren't able to go and, you know, settle into the wood, wooded areas, okay? For instance, you know, my uncle has a farm in Boone County, which is very close to the Ohio River, river across from um, across from Indiana, okay? Now, there's a property, a stone property on this farm that is dated just around 1836, okay? So the reason that, pop, that, that property popped up there is because Boone County is in Kentucky. We're in Cherokee country here. We're in Shawnee country here especially. And so after all those Indians were removed, people were finally able to go up and settle into new territory. So it's opening our nation up. You know, it's opening things up. <coughs> At the same time, okay, slavery, slavery is kind of getting amped up again, okay? We want to see, we're in 1830, right, man? We're in 1830. We're getting close to the Civil War. So how does how does this thing, this, you know, one of the most significant wars in our nation's history, how does this um, come to happen? You know, we got to figure that out. Okay, we're going to talk about two people. I want you to either make a note of these mentally or put it on an index card, okay? I don't care. The first person we're going to be talking about is a guy named Eli Whitney, okay? Eli Whitney is an inventor. He made something called the cotton gin, all right? The other person we're going to be talking about, which I really want you to get, is Nat Turner, okay? Now, Nat Turner was a slave, okay? Nat Turner is famous because he was the first African-American slave to lead an effective and sustained slave rebellion. So what do we mean by effective? Well, one, it kind of worked. It made an impact, right? Sustained, what does that mean? Sustained means, you know, long-lived. It's not short-term, right? They, they were able to keep it going. Okay, he's a significant figure. We'll be talking about him more in class. But let's get back to this guy, Eli Whitney, okay? Because before the invention of the cotton gin, because slavery had been slowing down. And just to let you guys know, a cotton gin, it's a machine that quickly and easily separates cotton fibers from their seeds. And it makes things much more productive. You guys know what productive is, right? It means it's like, you know, you're getting more stuff done than you were before. Okay? So, long story short, you're able to process more cotton and you're able to sell that cotton faster. And so, but who's, who's picking the cotton, right? If you, if you have suddenly a machine that allows you to separate cotton um, from the seeds quickly and um, process it much more effectively, well, you know, suddenly you have a demand for more people picking cotton. So slavery, bam, it's on the rise, man. And this is happening right during, you know, this is something that's kind of going on right in this time when the Indian Removal Act is signed, okay? Let me get back to Nat Turner real quick, or not, yeah, Eli Whitney. So, Eli Whitney, before the cotton gin slavery had been dying out, unfortunately, the new invention let plantation owners make huge profits. They used more enslaved Africans than ever to work their fields. So, this is a turbulent time in American history. We've got the Indians, you know, we were talking about the Seminole Indians being jerked out of Florida, thrown over into, like, you know, the West. It's a crazy time. It's a crazy time. Okay. So at the same time, and kind of as a consequence of this rise in slavery and the invention of the cotton gin by Eli Whitney, remember the name, we have, you know, forms of rebellion amongst, you know, slaves living in plantations, right? And we saw a bit of this in a video we watched in social studies yesterday. So what kind of ways did, what kind of ways did you know, slaves, you know, rebel? What kind of ways did they protest you know, their very cruel treatment in the South and at plantations, how did they do it? Was everybody re leading a revolution? Negative. No, they weren't doing that at all sometimes. We talked about briefly in social studies yesterday, we talked about how slaves kind of did a form of silent protest sometimes. Maybe it would be just, um, you know, burning food, 
maybe it would be, you know, um, you know, purposely breaking things. If you're a slave, man, you're, you're not getting paid. You're living in um, slave quarters in a plantation home. Now, I hope you guys know what a plantation is. A plantation is like a massive farm, okay? And usually, you know, there's multiple families of slaves who work here because they are usually harvesting cotton big time, even more so now because of the cotton gin. So, and slaves are also making meals for these, you know, plantation owners. Slavery is wide, widespread in the South, big time, big time, man. Okay, who's this guy, Nat Turner? Who's this guy, Nat Turner? And why do I bring him up when we're discussing this whole Indian Removal Act thing? How's he, you know, there's a lot of stuff going on. So Nat Turner, like I said, he's an African-American slave who led the first effective and really only sustained slave rebellion in 1831. <clears throat> so a little crossover there. You have the Indian removal thing. At the same time, you have this massive rebellion by Nat Turner. Okay, Now, this guy was born on the Virginia plantation of a guy named Benjamin Turner. Okay, So he's born, he's born directly into slavery. We talked about the Middle Passage months and months ago where we were getting slaves over from Africa and bringing them on in here. Well, now there's, this is like multi-generations afterwards, man. There's people, the only life that they know is slavery. They're born into it. They're born, in, imagine being born into a, you know, the role of a slave. That's insane. This guy's sold three times in childhood. He's hired out to a guy named John Travis in 18, in the 1820s, okay? Now, he becomes like a real advocate, a fiery kind of leader, okay? And he starts, you know, he starts claiming that he was chosen by God to lead them from bondage. Now, who does that remind you of biblically? Who are you thinking about when you think, duh, yeah, you're thinking of Moses, you know, taking the people from, you know, taking them to the promised land, right? Okay? So check this out. There's a word I want you to know. It's called an insurrection, okay? Have you guys ever heard of the word insurrection before? I'm going to tell you what it means. It means a violent uprising against an authority or a government. So Nat Turner starts this violent insurrection, okay? And this is scheduled for August 21st, 1831, when he and six other slaves killed the Travis family, where he was you know, a slave, and managed to secure arms and horses and enlisted about 75 other slaves, okay? This insurrection resulted in the murder of 51 white people, okay? It's crazy. Now, afterwards, Turner, he, he hides successfully for about six weeks until his discovery and conviction and hanging at a place called Jerusalem, Virginia, with 16 other of his followers. This incident, man, I tell you, the reason it's significant is because it proved, remember, we are living in a culture of slavery. This proves that there can be an uprising. And th think about this, man. Think about, you know, slaves, you know, remember, remember the, the three the three fifths compromise? The South has a lot of slaves in it, man. So Nat Turner is illustrating to Southern plantation owners that, geez, man, this could happen. There could be an uprising. Things are boiling. It's gotten to a point, the mistreatment of slaves has gotten to a point where people are just sick of it. They're fed up with it, okay? Now, this results in even harsher laws against slaves. It deepens the schism between slaveholders and free soilers. Now, we, free soilers are anti-slavery, kind of anti-slavery political party whose slogan, whose slogan like their, you know, uh, their motto, was free soil, free speech, free labor, and free men. And this is going to culminate, result in, the Civil War, which we're trying our darndest to get to, okay? So you kind of have the facts straight here. Eli Whitney, inventor of the cotton gin. Slavery has a, you know, a resurgence because they can process cotton much more quickly, and they're, they need more of it picked faster, more slaves. The South is steeped in the slave culture, okay? Nat Turner, this guy, 1831, kills 15 people. The Travis family starts an insurrection against slave owners, and it ends up killing about 51 white people. The result of this is these plantation owners get, oh man, this could happen. 
things are getting ready to boil over and it causes dissension, upset feelings between slave owners and these people called free soilers, okay? Good luck. We'll talk about this more in class. Think about it. Think about it.